What's up guys, this is the ARG Iceberg. I've compiled all my videos into this one long video where I will wrap up the whole thing completely. Do keep in mind that not all of these entries are alternate reality games per se, but they were on the iceberg so I'll cover them anyway. Timestamps can be found down below, so let's hop into it. Marble Hornets This is a web series within the Slenderman mythos. The first video was posted June 20th, 2009. The story follows a young man, Jay, who attempts to discover what happened during the filming of an unfinished student film, Marble Hornets. Upon investigation, Jay discovers a sinister involvement with a being known as the Operator. We discover that this creature stalks people and things go as you'd expect a creepypasta to proceed. The story is quite elaborate, spanning over three seasons. There are 92 videos on the main channel with spin-offs and side channels that have developed over the years. This ARG's notoriety and public perception has waned over the years, but it's still a very popular entry, making it a great first entry in this video. Cicada 3301 This is a nickname given to an unknown source who posted a set of puzzles to recruit codebreakers from the general public and the internet at large. The first of these internet puzzles started on January 4th, 2012 on 4chan and lasted for almost a month. The second wave began one year later on January 4th, 2013, and then the third and final round following the confirmation of a fresh clue. From what we understand, the third puzzle has yet to be solved. The stated intention of Cicada 3301 was to recruit intelligent individuals by presenting a series of puzzles which were to be solved. The puzzles consist of data security, cryptography, steganography, and internet anonymity. It has been called the most elaborate and mysterious puzzle of the internet age. Many have speculated that the puzzles are a recruitment tool for the NSA, CIA, MI6, or just a Masonic conspiracy. Ben Drowned This ARG began as a creepypasta set in an alternate reality with a popular cult known as the Moon Children. Ben was a boy that joined the group with promises of becoming like his childhood hero, Link. The ARG begins when an illegitimate game cartridge of Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask was purchased by the writer, Jaducible. There was said to be a spirit that was essentially haunting the cartridge and talking to Jaducible via chatbots, communicating with him in his dreams, etc. Eventually the spirit escaped the game cartridge and appeared to have consumed someone else in the process. The writing in this ARG was captivating and included some very well made footage of the game in question doing strange things. This is one of the most beloved ARGs of all time. It is considered the creator of many of the common tropes that can be seen throughout Copypasta today. Happy Appy This is a web series that was said to be airing on Nickelodeon as a children's show. The show was based on an apple on a stick that went on adventures educated people and helped kids with their injuries, though it had its own sick and twisted perception of things. The show was said to have aired a handful of times, but after parents complained about their kids seeing blood and gore, the show was said to have been cancelled by Nickelodeon. However, the creator wanted to continue the creation of the show, even if it wasn't on a major network. This ARG is the continuation of that series after being fired from Nickelodeon. The ARG included some pretty horrific scenes where people are murdered and eventually removes himself from the situation. Catastrophe Crow 64 This is an ongoing ARG that has some impressive backstory development with planning and plot elements starting over a year before the official debut of the video that sparked the ARG. It involved an individual reviewing an unreleased game called Crow 64 that they managed to buy online. From here, the spiderweb just gets deeper and deeper with its own language and a number of various sister channels that were part of the plot. There has been an absolutely massive amount of research that has been done to try and solve the puzzles as well as the logic problems that are present within this game. MatPat did a better job than I could, so make sure you check the Game Theorist video on this. Nevertheless, this is an incredibly well-crafted ARG. SCP Foundation some people have pointed out that the SCP Foundation doesn't necessarily count as an ARG since it's not really a game, but I will go over it briefly either way as it's a pretty significant section of the internet that resides in a similar realm. 
The SCP Foundation is a fictional organization that collects and documents user-submitted stories revolving around the securing, containment, and protection from various fictional creatures, scenarios, or other various creepypasta. The beauty of SCP is the growth of the community over the years. Not only do we have a good base of content creators, there has spawned a wave of people that create content based on existing SCPs. Whether or not it's an ARG, it's still a fascinating bit of the internet. Poppy Poppy is actually a singer, songwriter, and YouTube personality that is the primary character in this ARG. Poppy puts out eerie, off-putting, and awkward videos of various kinds with hidden meanings and symbolism throughout. However, this is just a character that is played by multiple different women who is the brainchild of someone else. This is another ARG with a ton of planning, sister channels and websites, and multiple people behind its works. There is a lot of speculation on its meaning and you can see a lot of symbolism in many of their seemingly random videos. It can be viewed as a way to mock and parody the idolization of celebrities as well as the culture surrounding it. To me, this is one of the more thought-provoking and reflective ARGs. Petscop This is a fictional, unplayable PlayStation game ARG that revolves around somebody posting Let's Play videos of a playthrough of the game. He narrates the game as he plays, giving his thoughts on what he's experiencing. He actually finds a cheat code attached to the game's case, and this is when it warps into a dark and twisted story involving people in the game developer's real life. These people are being reborn through AI being trained to the point of replaceability. The general premise is to quantify a character's traits and choices and then brute force AI coding until it can literally recreate the character in a digital format throughout the game. This ARG also has a ton of backstory with a very dedicated community. There's far too much to go over in this video, but it's worth checking out. Unico Sobrevivente 2027 This ARG started with this video in which these people are claiming to be the last two survivors in Valencia in the year 2027. The footage is a tour of the city in which there are literally no other people in the footage whatsoever. You don't see moving cars or bikes at all. There's unnerving music playing in the background, and the description reads, Please, someone help us. We're honestly freaking out. We just got back from a walk through the city of Valencia. There is nobody. Just the two of us and birds. No other soul in sight. Just empty streets. We're freaking out. Please. Anyone? Anyone else still out there? Today is April 28th, 2027. We woke up at our normal time, had coffee, checked out our emails, and had breakfast, but something seemed off. It was so quiet out there. No car sounds, people walking and talking, nothing. This was later revealed to be a doctored video, digitally removing all the people within the videos. It mostly served as a way to market the creator's travel vlog and website, though it definitely got people's attention. No players online. On the surface, this ARG looks and poses as a simple, downloadable, playable online game from the 80s or 90s era. However, the game's website has a trailer that has a lot of foreshadowing and additional content that is relevant to the game itself. When the game is launched, a VHS tape is played and you see what looks to be a server list for a near 30 year old game. Of course, all of the servers are empty and it doesn't really matter which one you enter. Upon joining a server, you join a game of capture the flag against nobody and an empty server. When you begin to capture the flags, things start happening. Colors shift, music changes, additional lighting appears, then shadowy creatures start appearing, and eventually another player seems to join the game. This is when the real story is hinted at with the game developer's wife being brought back to life. There are a ton of secrets and different endings in the game that can be discovered, and really this is just a fun concept that has developed a bit of a fan following. Hi, I'm Mary Mary. This is a web series about a girl that wakes up and suddenly finds herself in an exact copy of her home, except everything is locked and unable to be opened. She is stuck. 
Everything is fine during the day, however, at night the girl meets four different creatures that mirror certain aspects of herself. Each of them appear to be manifestations of her own deficiencies and insecurities. Eventually, Mary is allowed to leave her house and is able to enter what she calls the garden, where she meets a white version of the creature she found at night. Soon, even this garden corrupts and she's forced to find other ways to cope. The ARG is continued on her Twitter and blog. This is a tremendously jam-packed ARG with many layers to it and is definitely worth checking out. Ted the Caver this is often regarded as the very first creepypasta. It involved a man named Ted Hagerman. He started a blog where he documented his experience exploring the caves of Utah. At one point, he found an undiscovered section of the cave that was not possible to reach with such a small hole accessing it. Ted and his caving buddy Brad began chipping away at the section to get to an unexplored area. On his blog, from here, things began to get more dark and twisted. Ted writes in a journal style of writing while posting a number of pictures that would serve as evidence for the legitimacy of his story. He had actually written the story for an entire year before its launch and would thereafter release the story in segments as if it were really happening over a period of time. However, the part about Ted caving and finding an unexplored section of the cave was real and it served as the inspiration and foundation for the ARG that followed. Unedited footage of a bear. This ARG is the brainchild of Alan Resnick, who you will be hearing about more as we go on. It started as a short film on Adult Swim entitled Unedited Footage of a Bear. It begins with what looks to be cell phone footage of a bear with someone speaking over on top of it, then it quickly shifts to an infomercial about an allergy medication called Claradrill. Shortly into the video, the chipper music slowly fades away and a clone of the mother being portrayed appears in front of her vehicle. This clone then beats her to submission and runs her over with her own van. And from here, there's a series of video clips with multiple versions of the same woman, when analyzed further, it becomes apparent that this infomercial is actually much more than it appears. The side effects listed do not appear on any allergy medication, and instead they appear in antidepressant medication. There are a ton of additional clues that can be found throughout the video and the accompanying website that paint a much deeper story. However, this is just the beginning of this creator's content. Alan Tutorials this is actually another one created by Alan Resnick. It's a seemingly real YouTube series taken from the point of view of a mentally handicapped man that's stuck in the mind of a child. It starts out with random incoherent tutorial videos using whatever is around him at the time, much of which are actually dangerous tools. Over time, viewers begin to question why this mentally challenged man has such easy access to dangerous items. Finally, a video is uploaded where the man seems to have been kicked out of his home and the videos begin to drastically change. The upload consistency becomes much more infrequent as this man sparingly documents his journey from being homeless and bloody with gruesome unkept fingernails to being held captive and forced to create new tutorials. This is a wild ride through a deeply thought out, shocking metaphor for much of what YouTube has become. It also has ties to the previous entry, suggesting they may exist within the same universe. Cat Ghost This is an animated web series with a horror and comedy element, created by Chris Patrick and Alexis Ruiz. It's about three friends who encounter a variety of strange situations over the course of 13 episodes. Almost all of the episodes feature a complimentary playable game that would typically revolve around the theme of the pairing episode. Naturally, playing these games would reveal more about the secret backstory behind the series. The subjects covered in this ARG range from philosophical to metaphysical. We learn of the characters' past lives and their use of witchcraft. It appears that these characters are actually stuck in purgatory. And after some episodes, the characters and their relationships evolve while the plot thickens. Making different choices within the game yields different aspects of the hidden backstory behind it. 
This is a great use of games being tied in with the animated series. Ash Vlogs. So the Ash Vlogs are a series of videos on YouTube that are portrayed as an innocent vlog by a young lady named Ash. However, in each of the vlog's description is linked a separate video that show creepy clips such as Ash being stalked while she's filming an episode of the vlog. The main videos continue as normal, but the videos in the description begin showing relevant items that correlate between the two, such as a box that was packed in the description video to being delivered and received in Ash's vlog. This leads to the final video in her main vlog style that show her and her friend being abducted. There are several other channels used in conjunction to further explain the exact happenings that occur within this ARG. It gets quite murderous throughout the various videos. The production value and forethought involved in the creation of this ARG is tremendously impressive. 11BX1371 this started out as an anonymous post on 4chan, claiming a DVD was found at a park bench and had uploaded its contents to YouTube. It contained a two minute long video with black and white footage of a man in an abandoned brick building wearing an old Plague Doctor mask. The audio on this video features a jarring, grainy static sound that makes no sense to the naked ear. After some thorough inspection of the video, several codes can be noticed between a flashing light, fingers being lifted, numbers being displayed, among other codes and clues throughout the video and audio files. Another of the DVDs was sent to a Swedish tech site who ended up writing an article about the DVD. A community formed to decipher the video's puzzles which soon yielded a good amount of hidden images and messages. Much of it actually alluded to hostility against America. It was quiet for some time until a man came forward with enough evidence to show him as the genuine creator of the ARG. It was then revealed that he had simply created this as an art project. However, some still deny this to be the case. Where is everybody? Just like the title alludes to, this is an ARG where someone seems to be completely alone in the world despite traveling to various places. The platform for which this ARG takes place is actually on TikTok. This person is sharing his experiences as he travels. Many places he visits appears to be out of power, so his videos are dimly lit. At some point, the person has access to a restaurant with its lights on, so some places do have electricity. There's also a creature of some kind that's supposedly following him in certain videos. They're either keeping that a mystery or they're keeping it simple to remain professional. All in all, it's not an original concept, but it's done fairly well, and they've amassed a decent following on TikTok with this ARG. Candle Cove Candle Cove was a thread conversation had on a forum called Net Nostalgia. One user innocently asked if anybody else remembered a children's show called Candle Cove. She could not remember much about it and only gave vague information. Someone actually replied to her thread and asked if they meant to show about pirates. Sure enough, this was the show that the OP was talking about. Before long, others had started to remember the show and detail their accounts of it as well. More and more information was brought to light. Characters on the show, scenery, items, personalities of the characters. OP mentioned a dream that they once had and others said that they actually remembered that specific dream as an episode of the show. One of the users taking part in the conversation asked their mother if she remembered the show the mother was surprised to hear that they had remembered such an event. When inquired why the mother was surprised, she had explained that it was strange that someone would be so interested in a show about pirates and then watch a blank TV screen with nothing but static. The Sun Vanished This is an ARG that takes place over Twitter. The synopsis is that the sun has disappeared completely and has not returned whatsoever. The original account is continuously posting updates on his progress of finding places to stay, with little to no power found throughout their search. Not only that, but flickering lights are floating around, projecting a strange sound. We are included in regular communication via text messages with a friend of the account owner. The friend is giving advice to avoid the lights and never look directly at them, especially the red and blue lights. 
There are also people involved, but they are lifeless, almost like a zombie. Eventually what appears to be giant UFOs are seen in the sky, and some of them are projecting incredibly terrifying loud noises that can be heard with blinding lights shaking houses as it flies above. This has a very War of the Worlds-esque kind of vibe, however there's more of an emphasis on the survival and the suspense aspect rather than the monsters or the alien aspect. It's still a very fun and creepy ARG. I am Sophie. This is a wild ARG that has some of the highest production value I've ever seen in an ARG. It starts with Sophie, the self-proclaimed queen of YouTube, who flexes her lavish lifestyle in mansions, private jets, and other clearly expensive areas that has been granted by her millionaire tycoon father. Her vlog follows her around on her luxurious adventures, accompanied by some incredible b-roll footage. Slowly but surely, the story takes a left turn as we meet her friend Lara, who seems to dress, walk, talk, and act exactly like Sophie. We get some very weird vibes from this character, and over time we are given quick flashes of other characters. One recurring character is a grotesque looking man with a hand stitched into his face that becomes known as the algorithm. At one point things go south for Sophie and the other characters introduced in the show. The story starts getting deeper and more complex with the introduction of a spirit within a computer game. It seems as though the spirit possesses people and turns them into these selfish, wicked, glamorous people that focus on their image above all else, and it seems as though Lara took on the twisted traits that Sophie had. I Am Sophie was submitted to independent film festivals by the creator. He went on to state that the series was about hate, isolation, and what the algorithm does to your life as a YouTuber. So, uh, yay. The house has people in it. Whew, so this one is a bizarre trip. It's introduced as a 12 minute adult swim horror short from the same guy that brought us unexpected footage of a bear and the Allen tutorials. And let me tell you, this is one of the weirdest, craziest 12 minutes I've ever witnessed. The video begins with a login screen for what looks to be a database for surveillance cameras. You are then presented with surveillance footage from a number of cameras taken throughout the home as a birthday party is taking place. It seems somewhat normal of a family event, except what looks to be a young lady face down on the kitchen floor while the two adults converse above her. Things slowly start to get dark and twisted as the young lady slowly begins to fade through the floor into the basement. Hysterics and panic ensues as the lady finally falls through the floor onto a mattress. Then it ends with all the partygoers outside laying face down at the same time of the young lady hitting the mattress. Upon further examination, you can find clues that lead you to other media platforms that have an additional two hours of content to explore through. This is where you learn about the fictional disease and a clay that the family has been eating. There's also this creature here that's hidden directly in the footage. From the wacky randomness of the content as well as the words of the creator, it honestly seems that there isn't really a clear story or message that's being delivered. This seems as if it's mostly up for interpretation as to what it means. I personally think it's a message on how powerful the placebo effect is and how much your thoughts have an impact on your life. But that's just a theory. Again! Alex Kansas. This is a YouTube ARG that's a little bit different than the other entries we've covered in this iceberg. This is debatably the first entry on this berg that's considered analog horror. And before I continue with this entry, let me give a brief explanation of what analog horror is. It's less based on visual jump scares and more auditory or psychological horrors. Oftentimes they rely on VHS style video to make it feel a bit more realistic. Other times they will display an emergency alert system being ran to alert viewers about something that's very very strange to hear. It could be a simple warning like you may hear a knock at the door and you should not open it, or a warning to not look at the full moon that night. Another unique aspect with analog horror is that you are often the main character. There is not necessarily a character that we follow throughout the story. To me, this feels a little bit more personal and appeals to a certain feeling inside all of us. Oftentimes it won't make sense until much later when these seemingly random tidbits start to merge together into one conglomerate story. But back to Alex Kansas. This style of videos created comes off in a radio broadcast or documentary kind of style. Most 
most of them are between 3 and 10 minutes long. The first few videos seem to be slowly introducing you to the mythos that they have created. He shows a few videos that seem to be indirectly describing various creatures or situations found in that reality. Some of them are creatures like the corner folk, or a condition where you can only walk backwards. But soon we're introduced to the most popular entries. Alex creates situations revolving around American monuments and locations where strange things happen. Creepy documented stories of creatures living within these statues, or in this case where anti-Americans are taken to correctional facilities located at American monuments in order to symbolize a return to American virtues. When these people returned to their families, they were said to have improved personalities, no memory of their anti-American past, and even slightly altered physical appearances. Or in several of the videos that will tell a story of a national monument and a creature living inside of them. They will only show a few frames of the monster, giving just enough vibe of creepiness to get you thinking. Alex released a 31 second teaser for season 1 of the Monument Mythos, where he will be going over international monuments next. We've seen a couple of entries into this, but it seems like Alex has started to make some more and we're all excited for him. Gregory88 this is an interesting 2019 Twitter ARG, where a man is left responsible for a big house in the middle of the woods. The Twitter account actually starts very innocuously with nothing relevant really to the RPG. This was most likely a dormant stage to add a sort of validity to the account to prove it was not simply just hopping into a story. Where the real story begins is when the man begins cleaning the property around the house, he starts finding artifacts and other strange things. He doesn't really think much of it at the time, but eventually he starts finding things that genuinely startle him. Then, he sees a girl with no eyes. The story begins to delve deeper into the surrounding town and its peculiarities like no eggs being found anywhere, as well as an abundance of kids. Greg did a great job pacing out the submissions to this Twitter over time, and we actually eventually meet the girl with no eyes. She reveals the artifacts were actually meant for his protection and that there exists something in the water surrounding the house. Though this ARG answers a lot of questions, there still remains a lot unanswered. We unfortunately may never find out as the Twitter account has since gone cold with no new posts. Local 58 so, Local 58 has taken on a bit of a cult following. On the surface, it appears to be a series of scheduled broadcasts by a local news station. When analyzed, however, you begin to see that this has a much more sinister agenda at play. Each of these videos are only a few minutes long, but really drive home their point. Throughout its story, we see a strong emphasis on the moon and what happens when people look at it. We see an emergency broadcast that advises us to avoid the moon, and then that same broadcast seems to be hijacked and instead tells us to go outside immediately and look at the moon. Then we see these messages telling us, It's in the light. The moon came in. He found me. Through the mirror. Moonlight white. White like eyes. Not light, but blood. I drown in him. If you are afraid, we will look together. We then see a clip of the moon descending with a crowd of people screaming in the background. In other videos, we see personalized sleep programming for a Philip Gerhard involving a number of image faces and seemingly subliminal programming through these phrases. There's also a show for children on the same channel that seems to be programming for kids as well. There's clearly a lot more here than meets the eye. To me, however, these are really just a play on the potential for the danger that can be caused with malevolent use of emergency broadcast systems. Whether that be advising you to take a life or cause harm, or through the work of brainwashing and subliminal programming. I think that's why the analog horror genre is so popular, because it's typically placed in a time before the internet as emergency broadcast advising the nation to do something irrational could have resulted in mass hysterics and could result in a lot more damage to the world at large. And without the internet to verify these things, who knows where it could end up. Tengri137 so we're definitely getting deeper into the iceberg here, information is starting to get more sparse as I proceed further, and my suggested feed is getting more and more weird as I go on, thank you algorithm. Speaking of algorithm, if you're enjoying the video, encourage the algorithm to spread this to more people by liking and subscribing. But back to Tengri. From what I understand, Tengri137 refers to a series of puzzles that were posted online, much like Cicada 3301, however this one doesn't have quite as much pizzazz or reach as Cicada. Instead, this one takes a more cult or prophetic-like approach, as it had requested viewers to contact local news outlets about their findings. Along with the number puzzles, there were messages written in foreign languages. There seems to be a small sect of people that agree the puzzles here are so significantly complex that the source has to be something supernatural 
or otherworldly, especially as Tengri itself is a form of a religion. After this image was posted on Imager, we receive a series of tweets containing Bible verses and audio clips that each contain various hidden codes. The most commonly accepted conclusions have been this being an attempt at first contact from another race of beings, sharing sacred knowledge, or it's an incredibly elaborate hoax, while there also seems to be another group of individuals that insist these are previously accepted concepts in more advanced fields of mathematics. Quite honestly, I don't have the mathematical expertise to give a valid opinion on this. Maybe you guys could find out more than I could. Daisy Brown this was a series of videos on YouTube where a character was played named Daisy Brown. Unlike many other ARGs, this one is not focused on puzzles as much as heavy emphasis on an interactive story. While this all played out, the character was continued to be played via social media, giving a very real feel to its authenticity. The series starts where a girl is feeding what looks to be a paper mache monster puppet named Alan. It has a strange vibe to it, but nothing too creepy yet. However, over the time, the creature begins to grow and we begin to meet other creatures. We learn more about how and why this girl is alone taking care of this monster. Her father was very harsh with her and Alan begins to take on many of the same traits, killing some of her other creature friends and pulling the hair out of Daisy's head. The posts pace themselves out, allowing people to discover and interact with Daisy. There are even clips of Daisy asking viewer submitted questions to Alan. This story has a definitive ending, but the twists and turns along the way make it a pretty jarring trip. The endings seem to have a widely hailed reception, with many people feeling very satisfied with the way it culminated. The creator of this project went on to work on a new ARG called Echo Rose. Stan Frederick Starting as a web series from 2012 and a much younger Stan, he earned his place among the creepypasta and ARG communities. He started in a Slenderman story that had mild success, however it paved the way for a series he's more recently started in the same mythos. However, instead of a single Slenderman haunting this young man, it's him on the offensive. Stan takes the role of what he calls a signal disruptor, where he visits other people who are having similar hauntings with other creatures and beings of various kinds. However, now he's gained some sort of immunity or ability to communicate and interact with these entities. Stan takes us on his adventures as a sort of Ghostbusters or X-Files agent of some sort. There's a lot more to the story like his run-in with an entity who has become his rival Connor. Stan is forced to make a deal with Slenderman where he trades his own life for the ability to take Connor with him. Luckily this doesn't prevent him from continuing the final season as he begins to occupy the body of his deceased brother Eric. This is a fascinating concept that can branch off into any number of paranormal investigations paths, it will be exciting to see where he takes this show from here. My Dad's Tapes this started as a YouTube channel that was documenting an investigation a man named Chris was having with several tapes that were left after his estranged father died. On these tapes were recordings of various shows and movies, however interwoven between the shows featured a series of stalkings and murders of different young women by a masked man. Since Chris never knew his father, he was unsure of his father's ability to do such a thing. After this, he interviewed a number of different people about their thoughts on whether or not his father would do such a thing. The Results were mixed, but nevertheless were introduced to Chris's uncle Don, who will play a pivotal role in this series. Eventually, we're introduced to the ARG's sister channel, aptly named Do Not Continue, to warn off Chris from pursuing his investigation any further. The two channels go back and forth in response to one another, with Do Not Continue's channel displaying various murders, and in response, Chris continuing to find new clips on his dad's tapes and posting them online. The antagonist kidnaps Chris's girlfriend, and eventually a meeting is held between the two, in a restaurant in broad daylight might I add. And it was at this point all remaining sense of immersiveness is thrown out the window for me. Nevertheless, the production value throughout the series is pretty decent with some on point acting at times, but I think it's ironic that Chris points out that Do Not Continue is just killing senselessly just to kill, and to me that's exactly what this show ended up being. Just a surface level murder porn, but maybe you'll find more to it. Emergency Alert System Videos Outside of the emergency broadcast from the earlier entries in this list and others like them, I wasn't sure exactly what this was in reference to, but I believe I found something that correlates with it. It revolves around these fake emergency broadcasts. While not necessarily an ARG on the surface, they can still fall under the category by checking off some of the same boxes. People interweave these videos into clips of something entertaining that is watchable to begin with, then they prank their friends or family with this alert. So while we're not involved as a viewer, the unsuspecting victim 
victims are unknowingly playing a game with the organizer of the prank. And realistically, when I was researching these videos and imagining what it would really be like to experience an authentic event like this, it's truly a chilling thought. We really are powerless in the grand scheme of these things, and these emergency alerts can really instill fear into many people, especially those that grew up pre-internet and had the television as their primary form of entertainment. But that's just a theory as to what this might be. If you guys know of any particular ARG that was referenced here, let me know and I'll include it in future videos of the series. This is my Milwaukee. This lesser known ARG ran from 2008 to 2009 with a pretty definitive end point. The original piece of content involved an 11 minute video that comes off as an advert for the great city of Milwaukee. The first few attempts feature residents of the city claiming that this was their Milwaukee, followed by a number of various attractions throughout the city. But after this short intro, the real calling for the video steps up. At about the three minute mark, the narrator casually mentions, with containment and decontamination well underway, young professionals are flying walking back to Milwaukee. Nightlife is thriving as though nothing ever happened. But there's no mention of what happened and the narrators continue forward with this speech about how great the city is, as well as a tiny comment about finding partners other than humans. Up to this point we've only seen subtle references to Blackstar, but around 4 minutes we hear a concrete reference to this company. Shortly after this we see a couple drinking and dancing and we begin to sense that oh so familiar discomfort that's found in many ARGs. We see likely various facts pop up while they're dancing, and then a final fact with intentionally short appearance on screen with uncertain meaning. Then we see the couple walking out of the bar and walking separate ways. The narrator then gives a hip talk to the teens that will be moving to the city, along with some friendly advice to never travel alone or forget your rebreather and flare gun, again with no context around the warning. Here is where we hear the first reference to the god seed fragments chasing you and leading them to class K rated facilities. We then hear the narrator arguing with somebody in the recording studio and the narrator saying, throw them to the god seed fragments. After this, things start to become a little clearer with reference to people leaving in mass. The narrator says they don't blame us for leaving and Blackstar doesn't either. They are offering us a free stipend of dark bucks and two years of free housing from Blackstar. We're then further introduced to the story of Blackstar creating a god. After a short clip of the narrator speaking with an adventurer, again featuring more hints at the creature beneath the ground, we get to see their random anime credit thrust upon us. Unfortunately, a lot of the ARG's follow-up content has been deleted, but from what I've inferred from the web, we had a lot of additional sources from this ARG. Sendine, the reported creator of the project, went to a lot of trouble to create a number of additional social media accounts, leaving comments on various pieces of content leading to additional steps. During this ARG's initial showing, we were able to see a countdown timer in the top right of the website. This has a sort of umbrella corporation type of feel to it, except with this Blackstar has a more vocal and seemingly more shady version that is handling the contamination. It seemed that this company bioengineered a creature known as Godseed and forced a quarantine of the city. You can find a number of people alluding to additional pieces of content including an account seeming to discuss about ebooks. However, it led people further into the ARG. These fueled this ARG, but since nobody has really kept up with it after its finale, it's difficult to track them down all in sequential order. This apparently caused a major buzz at the time from real residents of Milwaukee, as they were mistaking it as an attempt to keep people away from the city. Lasagna Cat this introspective ARG can be difficult to read between the lines. It begins as a web series that reenacts famous Garfield comic strips. It was produced by Fatal Farm, who has also created a number of other bizarre entries on this chart as well as Adult Swim's infomercial line. There's the ever-present awkwardness in these videos just like many other ARGs. The first videos post on the YouTube channel reenact various Garfield comics with an added laugh track. It then displays the comic strip it was based on right after. After this, it will show a music video that's relational to the comic comic strip that we just saw reenacted. We see a couple dozen videos created in the same manner, all posted from the same date in 2008. All except for the very first video, which followed a more simplistic version of the same format. So it seemed the creators demoed and tested the audience reception for the projects in 2007 and released the compiled work a couple of months later. The series went quiet after these videos were released in 08. However, nine years later, the series received a few new entries, taking the hidden meaning as well as the quality and production value to a whole new level. After a few teaser trailers came out advertising a seemingly new season for the series, we're given a video that encourages people to call a toll-free number
number, requesting you to state your name and your number of sexual partners. The videos take on a whole new level of creativity and production as we see a number of what appears to be behind the scenes videos with Odie and Garfield creating amateur videos. One video in particular shows a particularly unfunny comic strip and then follows up with literally an hour long breakdown of this comic strip, its deep symbolic meanings, and the genius that created it, Jim Davis. With the improved production value of the new videos, we're given increasingly bizarre and twisted videos after these comic strips. One comic strip was even recent from a time between the original Lasagna Cat videos and the new ones. The series culminated in a four and a half hour long video that actually featured recordings of all the call-ins from the phone number. They appeared as characters that knocked on the door. Literally this over and over and over for four and a half hours. We see a number of hidden messages in the newspaper that was being read by the characters, some in reference to the phone call, others in reference to a time loop that the characters seem to be stuck in. The day seems to be getting later throughout the video until finally an older version of John Arbuckle appears at the door himself with his claim of two sexual partners. However, the John Arbuckle that answers the door chuckles a bit and corrects the man saying John Arbuckle zero. The old John Arbuckle walks away through a strange environment where we see several mannequins and a feral version of Garfield attacking him and turning him into worms. All the while, we're hearing audio recordings of who appears to be the creator of Garfield, Jim Davis, talking about his cartoons. We then see an incredibly visual and symbolic clip of a woman giving birth inside of a toilet stall. She speaks something in a different language that translates loosely from Polish, giving birth to a human curse, being unable to receive grace, and her soul being swallowed up again and again. We then see a visual of Garfield being born from the woman. There's a lot more imagery and symbolism featured in the lengthy video, but I won't go too in depth on it. However, I will give my own opinion on the meaning of this. Keep in mind that this is art and it's meant to have your own interpretation to it. But my thoughts are this started as a blatant mocking and pointing out how unfunny the comic was with the original video in 2007. After the positive reception, the team decided to extend this further with the initial series of videos. I still think their intention was not necessarily malicious or rude, just to point out the irony in such an unfunny comic being so beloved and revered. However, the new series of videos extrapolated even further onto an examination of how Jim Davis must feel after so many years of being defined by his own artistic creation. Just like many people, Jim wanted to be revered for his vision and creativity, not necessarily a single man who only lives with his dog and inconsiderate cat. This is what the hour-long video was supposed to point out, the type of praise and adoration that an artist wishes to be known for, especially since the narrator in that video emphasizes that the characters in the comic can be replaced by anything and it still retains its value and wonder. The final version was truly the element that pushed it into the upper echelons of the ARG realm. This video, in my opinion, was meant to embellish the sad life that an artist might feel if his creation outshines and outlives him without the credit for the work being attributed to him. Garfield was the perfect comic strip to parody with this analysis of an artistic journey. The team behind the ARG did a wonderful job of satirizing the meta behind being an artist as well as incorporating real people to further emphasize a way for the creator to improve his own perception of self-worth by comparing his sexual partner number with others. If many people also had zero partners, his own perceived value would not be bad comparatively. But again, this is just my own thoughts, this could be much different for each person, and really it may not be what they meant for it. Nevertheless, this is a super fun ARG. Teletubbies Updates so this is not one of my favorites for a number of reasons, but before I go into them, let me explain what the gist of this ARG is. It starts out as a Twitter account that appears to be a fan-made account based on various Teletubbies facts. However, that's really just a title and outside of the occasional image from one of the characters in the show, there is very little content about the show itself. Mostly it was just nonsensical posts, many of which were eventually deleted. The tweets began to take shape as a conversation held between himself, known as Dave, and his soon-to-be ex-wife, Sharon, who ironically created her account on the same day as her husband, the messages between the two devolved from begging to absolute murderous lunacy. The Twitter account actually threatened other content creators on Twitter in their descent to help fuel the ARG. The story eventually moved to Dave murdering Sharon and her whole family. After this, the user claimed to murder and kidnap other people, seemingly gloating over his accomplishments on Twitter. Oftentimes, the user would reference Satan and cryptic messages like harvest time. At the time, this stirred up a lot of controversy 
controversy due to its graphic nature. However, after people pointed out the glaring mistakes in the ARG's storyline and development, people lost interest. To me, this is an ARG that focused a little bit too much on shock value and not necessarily substance, mystery, or deeply thought out plot lines and elements. Maybe I just didn't pick up enough into it to read further between the lines, so maybe you can find this one better than I did. Nevertheless, this just wasn't one of my favorites. Forgotten Languages this entry is on the far opposite end of the spectrum compared to the previous entry. Forgotten Languages is an organization that communicates in their own language and has produced various highly thought out content on a plethora of subjects for over 10 years, complete with factual links for source material. The topics range from paranormal to spiritual to philosophical to political ideology and more. You can tell these works were meticulously created and you can tell that time was spent on them. They also create pieces of music on YouTube with psychedelic and what looks to be highly advanced mathematical shapes, symbols, and designs. Although some of them feature different graphic visuals and others are simply completely different like a decoding of Cassini discus, which could be a tool used in their communication. In a wonderful interview with the creator taken by Elders Vault, he sums up the site here. Mission is to recover the small suppressed amount of knowledge. Do you think that there is knowledge that isn't accessible on the internet from normal means? Oh, certainly. The amount of knowledge currently available on the internet is just a small fraction of the available written knowledge, as most of our information will, uh, remains exclusively on paper in libraries, whether public, private, or personal. Our mission on ForgottenLanguages.com is to gain access to that knowledge and learn from it, bro. Expand our horizons as, as a global race of people. Going on, we come to find out that there are 35 masters that contribute to the content of the website, and the followers of the master's teachings are able to consume that content and learn the wisdom that the master is sharing. He goes on to say that the language that is being communicated derives from a specific vocabulary that is necessary to communicate the information. He states that there are powers and effects behind certain words and sounds, much like a spell or incantation, and that specific sound is necessary to communicate an idea or concept and there's a massive connection between sound, mind, and power. The interview is actually very fascinating, and I recommend checking it out. I'll put the link down below. The creator of Forgotten Languages seems to be very well-spoken and stable in his delivery, making it sound very genuine and authentic. He also uses very sound reasoning in his answers. He goes on to state that the music that's being published via their YouTube is an alternative way to gain knowledge, as music is a very powerful way to induce altered states of consciousness that are required to access primordial knowledge. They might also use videos as a method of interpreting their text as it can sometimes have multiple meanings. Upon being questioned on their values, he replies, Knowledge is what guarantees free will. Hence, we believe knowledge is freedom. Knowledge comes in many ways of which language it is just but one. Depending on how knowledge is, you need to take one or another approach to access it. This also implies that there are other life forms, different biologies, and mental disease and if you wish to share information you need to fully understand this life make them you elder questioned him about why information is being kept private via secretive languages to which he replies simply because we believe the average person is not ready nor willing many of them would not be interested in hearing a single thing as they most likely believe it to be falsities non-truths false statements pointless in our modern eyes technological society which is ever so creeping away from the deeper truths meanings truly means the human the creator later explains that languages simply don't have the capability to explain certain aspects of reality and must evolve and adapt to further explain certain ideas and concepts. One language that can describe all elements of life is impossible. This was a great interview done by Elders Vault and it really adds to the validity and depth of this ARG. This is by far the most enjoyable ARG I've had the pleasure of researching. The amount of effort that's gone into this project is immense with very little payoff monetarily, so there's obviously a reason to keep doing it. I'm very curious to see what the project leads to, and I'd love to learn more about it if it weren't hidden behind some cryptic wall. If any of you have any additional information about this one, whether it's positive or negative, please comment down below. I'd love to hear more about it. SVV 
So these entries are getting more and more strange as we proceed, but I'll do my best to sum up what I'm taking from this particular ARG. The Kabbalistic SVV organization, or Soladitas Volteres Volantes, starts at the website humanisbeing.com, where one must apply to become a member. Upon application, you're subjected to a series of puzzles and trials in order to test your qualifications on whether or not you're applicable to their membership. In the FAQ page, they answer questions, but they raise more. While being compared to Cicada 3301, they state that they seek different qualifications and unique talents, exceptional imaginations, profound visions, and that their application process required certain spiritual praxis rather than cryptographic techniques. Tucked into the FAQ, we also learn that applicants are approved as members will receive legion and being slash becoming. And as one of the final questions, we see a series of numbers with no explanations behind it. All throughout the website, you can find a maze of different links with various symbols and different languages communicated. When you read between the lines throughout some of their pages, you find that the SVV was established to promote research, psychosocial analysis, hermetic initiation, and training on introspectral ability and temporal phenomena. When read further, you begin to see that this organization seems to be performing what they call psychial or neurotopographical cacophony, or what translates loosely to mental discord and chaos, in order to stimulate systematized energy stimulation to extract a form of energy from you. They say it might also be considered as psychic somatism or spells or verbal evocation. So this ARG is pretty interesting because it relies on both shock value with the idea of extracting power from individuals, but it also has a heavy veil of secrecy, exclusivity, and puzzle solving. There are many elements of religion as the root of the order based on the Kabbalistic rituals and meanings. This is definitely one of the more interesting, complex, and cryptic ARGs that allow people to dig as deep as they want and be rewarded for their efforts. Lucid Dream Project. So this ARG is one of the more eccentric and complex that I've come across so far, and I'm honestly not 100% sure I've found the exact ARG that this is in reference to. However, I do believe that the gist is the same within each of the Lucid Dreaming ARGs, which some have actually merged together. I've never experimented with Lucid Dreaming myself. I had an older mentor figure tell me about his experience with it, and he said it wasn't worth exploring, so I haven't dabbled into it. However, the long and short of Lucid Dreaming is the ability to control your dreams while you're experiencing them. I've found a couple of ARGs that are supposed to take place within your dream, solving puzzles and seeking out various things while inside of your dream. When describing their system, they describe it as confusing, much like how you would feel during a dream. There is supposed to be a way to choose to explore this ARG further while lucid dreaming. I don't know exactly how this works. Perhaps there is a way you can tap into a specific dream similar to how you would join an online server in a game, or perhaps this functions like SCP where you log your lucid dreams and what comes about. This might be the case as on various discords they have sections where you can submit your dreams and even receive approval from the higher ups. There's also people mentioning how experienced players can utilize their knowledge and barter with new players. I couldn't find any further information on these IRGs but the premise seems fascinating although a bit convoluted to the everyday person like me with little to no experience with lucid dreaming. Gunslinger Pro 2009 this ARG puts an interesting spin on things by placing the human element taking the antagonist role instead of the AI. There's only a handful of videos on this YouTube channel and the clues to what's really going on are really not very apparent at first glance, especially if you're unfamiliar with Team Fortress 2, the game in which this ARG is constructed inside. It is structured to look like a content creator making meme and tutorial videos within the Team Fortress creator space. However, several clues indicate more is going on behind the scenes. Often throughout the videos, we see close-up clips of each of these ragdoll characters placed into the game. The faces on these ragdoll characters depict a horrified or pleading look to them, sometimes darting their eyes in panic. In the second video, it appears that the blue spy is breaking the ragdoll status and trying to get help through the video screen. The player quickly comes up behind the blue spy and zaps it out of commission before ending the video. In the following submission, you can see the player giving a tutorial on creating a mechanism that allows the ragdolls to appear as if they're moving. 
the ragdoll is taken on a ride and mocked as it flies behind the player's vehicle. The next video is a bit more confusing as it's taken from the perspective of a spider looking creature crawling through a dark room. The player then finds him and the video ends. It could be presumed that the blue spy has been mutilated and attempting to escape. The next video shows a clip of a line of ragdolls being mowed down by a sentry gun. The first ragdoll that appears in the video has eyes that are darting back and forth in what looks like panic. The video of the ragdolls being shot down also has a low quality filter making it appear as if it's some horrific act of murder like you see on various parts of the web. And the most recent video added to the channel shows a tutorial on creating a sled within his world. He takes one of the ragdolls with him on his ride down the snow mountain. At the end of the ride it seems as though it breaks its ragdoll status, gets off the sled, and begins congratulating the player. Immediately the player yanks the ragdoll, silencing it in the process. So the predominant theory for this ARG is that the player has found sentient ragdolls and is playing a murderous god, torturing them and rebuilding them similar to how Sid from Toy Story would treat his toys. This is an interesting premise for an ARG, but obviously there's not a whole lot of content to peruse through. If there were more to it, I think this would have a lot of potential to be so much more found on the tape. This is another ARG with an inconclusive finale from what I've seen. On this YouTube channel we see only three videos of black and white grainy filtered footage. We're not granted a whole lot of context but a lot of imagery and codes can be seen throughout the footage. The first code seen has been deciphered and it sends you to a link to download a game mod where you're stuck inside this filthy room. The only exit out of the room leads you to a jump scare from the ghostly face that was seen in one of the videos. And this face is also the represented image on this tier of the iceberg. There was an email found that had an autoresponder set up that featured the response, I'm stuck, and it led you to a map download that featured a dark tunnel system that you were forced to crawl through. Again, your only option to escape would be to fall down a deep tunnel where you would presumably end your character's life. A hidden binary code eventually revealed another map download, which led to an even bigger tunnel map that was more elaborate and featured a finale where you were chased by a mysterious creature only to again die at the end of the map. The spinning triangle here in this video is thought to be another code that has yet to be deciphered, and there's been no further discoveries within this ARG, so we're forced to deduce our own meanings behind it. Two of the most common theories are that this is a killer that's metaphorically being chased by the face of his victim, and the only way to escape the haunting is through facing a real life white screen finale. Or another theory is that since the most recent video has the lowest number in its name, it could be the first canonically. This would place the tunnel system first and suggests that the story features someone lost in a tunnel, unable to escape, however when he finally escaped he's paranoid from the monster chasing him and begins filming everyone around him. Perhaps the monster that was chasing him even escaped. Hell. The website for this ARG has been taken down, but from the Wayback Machine, I can see that the website launched in 2017, and as of April this year, it's showing as being taken down. But here's what we're seeing from back in June 3rd of 2017. We're immediately greeted with a very crude, dark website with the word hell written at the top, and a blinking gif with what looks like a young man with a number of blurred people walking behind him. Above him are the words enter and part two. There's also a disclaimer at the bottom. If you don't belong here, or you don't know what you're doing here, it's recommended you exit now. Upon clicking enter, you're greeted with a gif of subtle waves and water that are being gently rained upon. The song Love Crime by Susie Sue starts playing, which if you're a boomer or out of touch like me, you will have never heard, but let me just say it's got a very melodic, haunting, and beautiful feeling and vibe. The song ends and then loops. When you click part two from the homepage, you are greeted with this creepy bunny mask, some strange and off-putting audio, and what looks to be a code. Both of these pages have a message that can be read in the inspect element part as well. Luckily, some clever Redditors were able to solve the code and translate it to read, do you take the plunge down the rabbit hole without knowing how deep it goes? They were also able to find a hidden URL that was unable to be retrieved by the Wayback Machine, but the website displayed, congratulations, you have the actual answer to the entrance of part two. It then gave us a code that we'd need and told us to proceed. When proceed is clicked, you're directed to a page that leads to a cryptic riddle of some kind. Unfortunately, this is where the trail went cold. I've joined a Discord server toward working the puzzle and reached out to the members for further information on this ARG, but unfortunately I haven't heard back from anybody yet. If I hear from anybody, I will circle back to this one on a future video, but for now it seems apparent that this ARG is officially over. Away Glitch Swan 
Apparently this ARG was originally known as The Seven, but in 2016 they changed their name to Away Glitch Swan, which is cleverly enough an anagram for the words always watching. This ARG consists of several YouTube channels that post a variety of different styles of videos. Some of them feature puzzles or some sort of symbolism. Many of the challenges can be solved using sonic visualizers, decoders, spectrograms, but from what I've read about this ARG's history, the majority of the puzzles have remained unsolved. On top of this, the channels are frequently setting their videos to private or outright deleting them. Their channels varied pretty drastically. One channel, entitled Away Glitch Swan, Deceased, had only three videos, each titled Complex Puzzle. Another channel with the brackets saying G14 classified featured videos that were definitely very different. Strange clips, many advocating for peace and kindness, acceptance of one another, although it featured several puzzle videos as well. We want you to be aware of the evil around you. The third and final channel I came across had brackets surrounding the words World Peace Project. This channel also featured various clips advocating acts of kindness and societal change. Each of the channels had cryptic about sections and very little view counts compared to many of the ARGs we've gone over. I could not find any real further findings on this ARG, but from what I've encountered, they seem to be pushing for social change, relying on religious and political situations and encounters. I found multiple articles and people claiming that this had an affiliation with Cicada 3301, but the official Away Glitch Swan channel has stated that they have nothing to do with them. ECVA this ARG was made by the same writer and actor from Marble Hornets, which we covered all the way back in Tier 1. With that said, one might think that this could possibly be a sequel or follow-up to that series. However, there is not a direct antagonist, nor does it follow the same format of Marble Hornets. This ARG features a single YouTube channel with a number of videos dating back four years ago. The videos are comprised of animations, grainy film footage, and a variety of what looks like glitches, static, prompts, and logins. Much of it makes no sense on the surface. However, you can find what appears to be infomercials, recruitment videos, and a form of propaganda, many containing hidden messages and codes to the viewers. We see notes at the end of certain videos that provide us clues into the story behind the videos. Through these, we learn that it appears as though the uploader, who goes by the login S. Hawkins, is having lapses of memory, adding an even further cloudiness to its meaning. We come to find out that the user is investigating strange video broadcasts that are from what is presumed to be a dead television station called the ECVA network. Eventually, the broadcasts begin to target S. Hawkins directly, adding the potential for an antagonist to be introduced. The most recent video uploaded two months ago shows an animation and speaks about something called The Rot. It asks us if we wish to join it or destroy it. Then it promotes the new game Laos that is linked in the description. I took some time to play the game and it seemed to be a text-based choose-your-own-adventure style game. However, you're only able to select one of the given choices for the outcomes. It goes into a story about traveling down the rot and meeting some wicked creatures that invade your eye and force you to eventually take it out. After this story, you're given three different choices. However, I tried all three of them and they seem to all lead to the same outcome. I'm sure there's a whole lot more to this, but I found it interesting nevertheless. I might look further into this one day. Gmod 9 Fan Here's another ARG that's based in the game space. This time it's in Gary's mod instead of Team Fortress 2 like Gunslinger Pro from the previous tier. It's based on a series of videos that were supposedly released in 2006, however we can only find the channel that has since re-uploaded them in 2017, with the final video being released in 2019. The first three videos come off as just goofy videos that someone might make with creepy undertones throughout. I'm sure there are a number of different hidden meanings or messages throughout these videos, however in the following two videos entitled Junk Footage Number 1 and Junk Footage Number 2, we see some interesting footage with seemingly no intended purpose like the first few videos have. The first video shows the user slowly placing lights leading into a dark room in the back of a building. It appears that they're afraid of the room. They hesitate to go in before finally mustering up the courage to explore it with additional lighting. The second video shows what looks like the user putting a bunch of AI against each other for his own entertainment. And now the following videos where things start to get notably different. This one is entitled How to Crash a Server Easy in Gmod 9. The video shows the user creating a cross and spawning a ragdoll to place upon it and burn via an immolation arrow. However, immediately upon setting fire, the game in what looks like the user's entire computer crashes with some horrendous sounds in the process. 
The following video shows another creepy video of another ragdoll exploding upon kicking a vending machine. Then it displays the ragdoll laying down with music and the screen fading out while breathing sounds can be heard. The following video is the continuation of the junk video series. It shows the user jumping into a spinning object and upon its death, the screen goes black for a short while. You hear flies and someone breathing speaking to you before a loud and jarring return to the game with the character finishing its ragdoll death. The game is very dark and flashing even darker with a blaring dull siren sound being played in the background. The user first heads back to the building but it appears that the situation has startled him and he quickly exits the game. The final video simply entitled Done features the user setting up a scenario where the ragdoll is frying some watermelon over a makeshift stove. However, as it's being set up, we begin to hear some low eerie sounds and we see the table beside him gets flipped over on its own. The user notices and watches then slowly moves their cursor to the room he was afraid of. The user walls off the rooms and proceeds to another room in the building that he fills with hundreds of TNT barrels. After this, he sets them ablaze and runs away. The screen goes black and we see a face appear in the middle of our screen. The user respawns and returns to where it laid the TNT. The light turns on as they explore the room only to find black and white checkered patterns leading into a pitch black room that absorbs the light. My favorite theory for this ARG is that the user unintentionally spawned a spirit within the game when he lit the cross on fire. From here the spirit dwelled within the game until finally tricking the user into blowing the segment of the map he feared most, which essentially broke a hole in the game allowing it to break free. You're about to like the video and subscribe. You're chuckling to yourself, nah, I'm good. But something inside compels you to click it anyway. Robert Heltman. This ARG is a YouTube channel that contains videos featuring what appears to be a dead body wrapped in garbage bags, referred to as Daisy. Each of the videos show the body in various situations where the presumed killer had to set it up in. The body enters the scene and eventually leaves it in a quick manner. Within the descriptions of the video, the user always refers to an us or we, suggesting that there is more than himself in this house. The name of this channel is actually the same name of a famous Australian actor and ballet dancer who died in 1980. There are speculations that this series is in reference to him, but I don't know if I personally see enough evidence to support a connection. Inside of Mine did a wonderful video on this ARG, and although he supported this connection, I don't personally see it being the case. However, I do see his theory on a possible relationship to Christmas being valid. There are multiple videos with reversed audio being played. That reversed audio is an old Christmas clip from Santa Claus in the 1920s called Santa in Your Phonograph. Even though parts of his analysis was over the channel featuring 12 videos, two of them have since been unlisted. Nevertheless, Inside of Mind's theory holds a lot of weight. His theory asserts that this body is actually a spirit that works on its own free will, entering the house and exiting the house in its own way. You can see things happening around the body from time to time that suggest that this is the case, and it even seems to teleport in and out of shots upon entry and exit. The theory goes on to state that the video suggests that Christmas is dead and the body represents the spirit of Christmas, which has been turned turned into a capitalism and gluttony machine that we invite into our lives once a year over the 12 days of Christmas. There doesn't seem to be any additional context or sources for this ARG, so we're left to speculate from here. Roblox ARGs so unfortunately this vague entry was a bust. I found a few that were called Roblox ARGs, but they ended up being closer to Let's Plays than anything else with no real depth other than a few kids playing on a game together and laughing. This entry definitely taught me about the side of low effort ARGs that can pretty easily turn people off to the genre as a whole. So I hate to say it, but I'm skipping this one. Waking Titan. On the opposite end of the spectrum of effort and resources contributed towards an ARG, you have the appropriately named Waking Titan. This elaborate ARG involved many websites, radio stations, and call-in numbers throughout the world. It consisted of six different phases throughout two seasons lasting from May 2017 to July 2020. It was used in conjunction with two major updates to the game No Man's Sky. The creators of the ARG, Allison Smith, were able to use the game's massive 
the universe as a platform for which they were able to explore some of the science fiction technologies that might be found in a game like No Man's Sky. However, instead of relying on the game itself, they created an entire universe of their own with dozens of different puzzles and events almost every single weekend for over 18 months. They had 16 radio stations around the world, dozens of websites, a variety of voicemails, NPCs, YouTube channels, forums, Discord servers, physical locations, and so much more being employed here. There was a number of advertisements on these radio stations that featured hidden messages leading to fictional company websites that were creating using fictional technologies. Hidden in these websites were codes to find additional clues that would lead to passwords that were used in unlocking the entire puzzle at large. This was an absolutely massive undertaking that would take hours to fully break down and to analyze. I'm linking an entire breakdown of all the puzzles that all culminated to the release of the two major updates for the game. It was incredibly brilliant marketing and I hope that more companies choose to implement these things in the future. 70 Broad what a treat this one was. The mind behind this ARG is quite brilliant in my opinion. Unfortunately, the videos for this YouTube are almost all privated, so we're only able to go off of existing videos documenting these ARGs. Luckily, Nightmind and Insidamind both did a number of videos on this, but Insidamind had a tremendously well-made video that explained this ARG quite extensively, and they even had an interview with the creator. I won't go as extensively into it as they did, instead I will wrap up the entire arc of the story at large. The 70 Broad channel started with one nine-year-old video that featured a child screaming at a camera. There was no other context to it really. Then many years later, the creator made a playlist titled Then, which consisted of videos that showed the past two years of his life. He also had a playlist titled Now with current videos, where we see a young man named George that was more or less admitting to murder on YouTube. However, he seemed to be panicking and unable to form much coherence. He would be back and forth in his mood and appearance regularly. He was struggling to deal with his situation and no longer wanted to live. He makes it through, but nevertheless, his life slowly goes to shambles around him over a period of time. Alongside the YouTube channel is his Twitter that is continuously talking to himself, occasionally even referring to the show itself in a fourth wall touch meta kind of way. It's almost as if the character was speaking to the creator of the show via social media. The show starts developing a bit of a following and naturally people are beginning to question its legitimacy. This is when things get interesting. Instead of denying the allegation that it's fake, he admits it. You know, oh, this is so fake. Oh, what's going on? And I was like, well, you know, if people think it's fake, maybe I'll just come out and say it's fake and fuck with it. And immediately after he says this, he is forced to stop the show due to police involvement. He made an entire video over it and had plenty of proof for this because the police really were involved in his life. So there was no question in the show being a show. He then seemed to convert the channel into more or less a personal channel where fans of the series could interact with its creator and they even reacted to the previously created show. However, the creator slowly starts to experience his life fall apart, just like the character he had just played. He's kicked from university, removed from his housing, estranged himself from his family, and forced to live out of his car. And all of a sudden, he stopped uploading. It was at this point he decided to end the show with a bang. He agreed to an interview with Inside a Mind and explained everything. The creator actually created a show within a show. In the interview, he admits that the police were really involved and the university was aware of his YouTube, but they didn't kick him out. And he wasn't really living in his car. But eventually it got to be too much for him and he decided to explain what he had in his mind for how the show would end. It was essentially a fight club style situation where another character occupied his own mind with him. He had developed a character from his twin brother that had died when they were young. And we eventually come to find out that the video from nine years ago was a video of his twin brother on the day that he died. I can definitely see why he decided not to pursue this ending. Although I think it would have been a pretty awesome finale, it probably would have been difficult to pull off, especially with limited resources. It was also quite brilliant of him to agree to be interviewed by a YouTuber. This allows him to get his credibility for future projects. And instead of leaving things hanging, he's capitalizing off of his efforts. For all we know, he's working on his next ARG right now. Junko Jun Sui. Widely considered one of the most controversial ARGs in existence, it started in June of 2009 as a simple Facebook account from a young, attractive woman. The account began sending mass friend requests to people. Upon their acceptance, the account would send a message saying, We do not know one another. Not yet. I feel people's ability to share and communicate. It is my effort to allocate my labor towards such people. I have talent that is empathy. Please forgive me for being general. 
There are reasons I am in some danger if I do not obscure all articulations or if I reveal too quickly. Justice is systematic and quickly here. Please be my friend. More revealing will take place soon. Blessed be, Junko. When people began communicating with the account, they would reveal that she was residing in Russia with her family. Members of an online forum, Unfiction, were eventually able to uncover that the woman was part of a sisterhood. Not long after this, another member of the claimed sisterhood, Dine, began speaking on the forum, aggressively condemning users for pretending to be her friend. However, this confused a lot of people solving the puzzle, as a character from the game was openly hostile towards people simply playing the game. Dine would eventually dox some of the more vocal players, revealing their real name on the forums, turning many of the players of the game away entirely. However, it didn't stop everybody. Shortly after this, Junko tweeted an advertisement for a biotech company, suggesting that herself and others like her possessed superior genetics and were sought to be harvested. The production value was very high for an ARG, and that was not unnoticed. They released another video with several coordinates and a secret message leading to a page that requested you search for particular phrases. You're then redirected to a fake Google page that had predetermined results, leading people to the next clues. Players would eventually find a lengthy livestream video of a woman stuck in a white room. It was then discovered that it was a group known as Alpha Center, and we were being requested to help Junko and others like her to escape from their capture. The issue was these terms Jun Sui and Alpha Center were also names for real organizations throughout the world that were being contacted and accusing people of kidnapping. There were multiple different groups of people attempting to solve these puzzles, and they were beginning to become hostile towards one another, even utilizing information that had been previously doxxed by one of the ARG characters. After all this time and effort had been spent toward the ARG, it suddenly stopped and the user posting clues went silent. Then after complete radio silence, a mobile app was released entitled Alpha Archive that continued the story of Junko Junsui. It had a chatbot that would give some clues and charge players for additional content such as logins to falsified heavy security websites. In addition to this, the app encouraged the downloading of additional executable files to view further content. Needless to say, this turned people off and made people heavily downvote and discourage other people from using the app. This eventually became a mess that the creators were unable to control. Eventually one of the creators made an official post to say, Although the creators may have gone too far, I think that it was a tremendously impactful ARG that really showed the potential dangers in the ARG realm. Jack Torrance This interesting ARG was unique in that it directly involved one of the top content creators in the ARG genre, Nightmind. The creator of the ARG communicated with Nightmind indirectly as well as several of his viewers. It starts with a simple description of the original Jack Torrance YouTube that hosted the videos, these movies that were found in 10 rather large boxes at an estate sale for $5 a box. It was being held in a barn about 15 miles west of Austin, Texas. There were some old records, which we also bought, some rusted tools, tons of paint cans, various other bits of useless junk, and these boxes. The people running the estate sale didn't seem to know what they were and they priced them for us on the spot. The films vary in formats ranging from 35mm stock reels to Betamax. Many of the films were damaged beyond repair, but we were trying our best to repair and clean them up. As we dig through the boxes, catalog, and digitize more videos and audio, we will post more. Many of the videos on the channel were supposed to be these old films that were restored, cleaned up, and posted publicly. However, some of the videos featured what looked to be the owner of the channel renovating a house. There were creepy shots occasionally within the videos, but nothing was too out of the norm or demanding of attention. Soon enough, the channel went cold. Nightmind had covered the channel in the past, but it had since fallen off his radar with its inactivity. And two years after the channel went cold, they randomly started a YouTube livestream simply titled, Find Me. And here sparked the revival of the channel and a full-blown field investigation for Nightmind and his viewers. His team was able to communicate indirectly with the ARG creator through a series of cryptic messages, pictures of locations that were found and visited, and several drop point geocaches where items were left behind for Nightmind and other viewers to find and acquire. 
Communications were shared between Nightmind and Jack via uploaded videos going over the progress of the game and its findings. The ARG took a step deeper when several of the players of the ARG were identified via pictures of their homes being shared with Nightmind. I'm not sure it was a complete doxing, but shaking nonetheless. The involvement with Nightmind ended with a curse being cast upon him and the other players involved. However, he made a video where he cleansed the curse and all of the objects that were given to him through his involvement. You can definitely check out the Nightmind video as he'd obviously have the best vantage point on it. This seemed like a fun ARG. Nettlebrook Nettlebrook, otherwise known as Echo Rose, has been one of the most widely known ARGs in social media. The focus of the game is around a psychic who experiences mysterious things around her. She lives in the aptly named town called Nettlebrook. It's an ARG that follows an incredible number of different people and social media accounts including YouTube. The entire game happens all around the town where strange things seem to be happening. And you can't talk about Nettlebrook without a notable mention of Echo Rose. This is the name of the main character and she is a psychic living in this town. Through her YouTube channel, she exposes some of the secrets of the town she lives in and reveals more and more about what's been going on in her new hometown. Echo is in her 20s and a dropout from New York who has moved to this small town for a new way of life. She is an astrologer, psychic, empath, fashion icon with a goofy yet lovable personality and fondness for vibrant wigs and white claw. Echo Rose, who has decided to move to this small town, feeling lonely a bit out of place, she started vlogging on her new YouTube channel, telling viewers about what she had experienced and taking them along on solving the mysteries of the town. Meanwhile, people around the town started to make it known that she is not welcome around there, except for a few fellow YouTubers calling themselves Zipper Films, who wound up experiencing their own paranormal activity. Echo Rose's videos are littered with clues for investigators to spore over. They include binary code, curiously placed glitches, and objects with deeper meanings. Archimedes This is an indie horror game. After installing the game, an old operating system starts to run, and a strange man asks for your help as you start to discover alarming secrets behind the game. You will be required to interact outside of the game, with instances ranging from stenography and cryptography to real-world geographical puzzles and use of various external applications. The deeper you go, the more frightening and personal it will become. The operating system called ARC looks like a lousy old Windows between 3.1 and 95. A shortcut to an explorer, a start menu, a clock in the bottom right, and an instant messaging window opens. First contact with the person who claims to have uploaded the operating system. We have to answer him, but the sentences are pre-written and we just press the keys on the keyboard without any control over our answers. After a few exchanges, we open the internet browser and that's where it all gets dirty. By searching the documents on the operating system, you will find clues that will take you to an expedition of the 50s in a remote corner, the coordinates of which will have to be found on Google Maps. The operating system starts to glitch out, sizzling mp3 files, incomplete newspaper articles, the stranger with whom we chat with is caught up with an internal crisis, millennial viruses that infest our computers, and more. It ends with an email of instructions on how to get the first disturbing images. The investigations are ultimately very linear, which expect you to follow a track which is difficult to lose anyway. Classic GM videos. These are an older ARG slash creepypasta channel about Gmod9 player who is stalked by an unknown entity in his single player sessions. The ghost is the mysterious antagonist of the classic GM videos. It is a being that haunts the player during their videos. There are several messages found throughout here, and it lives up to its name as the classic GM videos. This room does not exist. In this ARG, two friends named Abigail and Ryan become tangled within the web of testing out a new futuristic VR technology. The main focus would be the two prominent characters, and an upload titled Archive One. The upload sets us off with Ryan front and center filming a series with Abigail. The upload then begins to glitch and we see a very troublesome scene where Abigail is running from someone or something. Archive 2 takes place from the interior where Ryan and Abigail are at a coffee shop. 
The two are approached to test out some futuristic VR technology for some random company. It isn't long before the two find out the nefarious means that were actually behind the VR technology. This is a pretty straightforward ARG and there isn't really too too much to it, but it is a very fun concept. Omega Mart Omega Mart is an immersive interactive art project slash experience. It has a physical location in Las Vegas. It's an art installation, but it is filled with clues and puzzles as well as the storyline surrounding its parent company, Dramcorp. The Dramcorp website has a login that requires a password. When you are at the physical location, if you ask an employee, they'll give you a keycard to access their computers for your further investigation. The art installation is littered with scattered books and pieces of story, which are supposed to be clues to solving the puzzle of the ARG. Post Content This is a horror-based ARG. It is a series told from the point of view of a young Danish man named Peter. Peter is trapped inside a house that is filled with all kinds of demons, monsters, and other terrifying creatures. Peter is a very unreliable narrator and it makes it difficult for the viewer to really know what's going on, or at least in the most intriguing way possible. From the beginning, it is established that Peter is trapped in this strange house that's crawling with demonic beings intent on harming him. It becomes clear that he suffered from some sort of traumatic event and lashed out at another person. Now he must deal with the loss and tragic murder of a friend. As he deals with his loss, things get more complicated and more mysteries are uncovered. The demons are frightening, terrifying creatures that truly show how far homemade special effects can go. So, should you trust Peter or not? Pizza Time Pizza This is a black comedy about a strange pizza place that is definitely not a cult. Starting as a series of bizarre ads before growing into a story. It includes a separate website with secret videos and some leaning on the fourth wall here and there. The series was made by Alex Bale, a YouTube filmmaker who mainly produces black comedy shorts and they are fond of making weird commercials and ads like this one. This extended to a good number of episodes and has only recently completed its saga. The Outsider 110 This ARG is full of encryptions. It's focused around a killer in a city. After solving mysteries in his previous videos, he posted a new one. He doesn't release new ones unless the current one is solved. He normally uses ASCII or hexadecimal to encode. This ARG is the puzzle solver's paradise. They won't release additional content until the previous ones have been completely solved. Everyman Hybrid This was a Slenderman based YouTube ARG that also makes use of the rake. This is the third largest and second longest running major Slenderman series. It takes heavy influence from Marble Hornets, but over time has taken more of its own course. It makes the heaviest use of fan interaction among the five major ARGs through use of interactive games, Twitter, interaction with Slender blogs, live streams, and meetings with fans. Currently, it has 84 episodes and 6 hidden videos, which were most likely added by the series' main antagonist, Habit. This ARG is chiefly responsible for forming the modern mythos of the Rake, and secondly responsible for forming the more modern mythos of Slenderman. The series was eventually concluded with the video Introductions on January 1st, 2019 after a run of 8 years. Everyman Hybrid was created originally as a health video vlog by friends Vincent, Evan, and Jeff. Later appearances are made by Jeff's brother Alex and Damsel. The three originally intend to prank the audience by creating a fake Slenderman and placing it in their videos in obvious places. However, after episode 6 things go south as the real Slenderman appears in Evan's house. The videos since that initial sighting record the friend's attempts to unravel a mystery concerning their pasts. An unknown puppeteer known as Habit, Slenderman, The Rake, and viewers in which they are all involved in ways they do not understand. The series also makes reference to House of Leaves, Marble Hornets, Tribe 12, and a few other Slenderman vlogs. What is assumed to be Habit posts videos on the EMH channel that the characters are seemingly unable to see. They make heavy use of distortion as influenced by Marble Hornets when in the vicinity of Slenderman. This is the first series to connect multiple creepypasta entities and media. 
though including the rake, possible references to Candle Cove, having an appearance and references to House of Leaves, and being intertwined with at least one Slenderman blog and its plot. Fan interaction is also important, with several videos posted by fans being crucial to the storyline. T1WRE3 The videos on this channel show short, dark animations of a character who identifies himself as No Name and communicates by text. The characters make several puzzles and send several download folders. Using encryption and analysis to figure out puzzle passwords, you could manage to open them and get one to open that has a Minecraft map. Playing this map, it is discovered that No Name is the pseudonym of an American named John, who allegedly killed his sister by burning down their house. Experiencing Joy This is an ARG about a cult, a planet that does not exist, and an Orwellian dystopia. The video describes an island off the coast of India. It was part of a chain of islands called Cameron Isles that was completely untouched by any industrial revolution because it was protected by the Indian government. They live primitively without any interaction from the outside world and without any of the technological advancements. The rest of the world had discovered Cameron Isle itself as the largest of the chain and was well known to be inhabited. It was discovered that it was much smaller and was overlooked in 1980. An aerial survey was conducted that showed another isle to be covered in a thick forest with dozens of unexplored ruins. People had planned to go there and explore a luster isle, but a tragic event ensured no one would venture to this island again. Caring is a YouTube-based ARG developed by Josh Spokens and Derek Colorbars. It was created to help people in a form of self-help. Caring's first video was released in 2015. The videos are released intermittently with ambient sounds as the main notable detail, as well as clues and details all over the videos to be de-encrypted and explain a story. The videos are said to connect to each other, telling the story of life experiences. The last video was released around March 2016, and Josh came and expressed the decision to stop the channel and explained a couple of clues that were in the previous videos. WKAL This is another YouTube-based ARG with all of its content coming from a YouTube channel called Kyle Wall. The first video was in August 2017 titled Pepsi Fire Review Que. At first, the channel looks like a regular YouTube channel, but after watching several videos, you'll discover a pattern in a way the videos are made. The videos are a series that go on with a pattern introducing the video, like something that is to be advertised or talk about only to make funny and weird statements that do not justify the title. The video series is still on and had its most recent video in August of 2021. 9A13D514 this is a since-deleted YouTube channel that left a series of comments on various videos in 2018. Their comments were always a series of dots and dashes which were eventually converted into Morse code. When users compiled the comments, it translated to a story. The faceless girl is watching, the faceless girl is smiling. He is waiting for the drizzling rain to halt and for the purple eight clouds to fade. She will undo the rot and wipe the spirit dreams away. The faceless girl rots no more because she lives. The channel only had one video that featured garbled footage of a game called Tuhu. One of the characters featured in their video actually didn't have a face either, so the faceless girl from their comments is thought to be in reference to her. It is believed that these two people were the characters that were originally designed to be in the game, but were cut due to time constraints. Not much is known other than this. At Destiny5591. This is the handle of a mysterious Twitter account tweeting clues that indicates they have been taken and need help. The first tweet was in March 2021 and it goes, Just talk with me. Anyone? I won't harm you. The tweet went on with replies and further conversations with another account with the handle at Rhythm Detective, who is believed to be involved with the ARG. At Rhythm Detective is a bit skeptical and suspicious and asked in one of the tweets if everything was alright. They noticed a pattern in the tweets of Destiny, and they go on to ask if it was deliberate and if there was any reason for it. Destiny's later tweets form a coded message capitalizing some letters which ultimately reads, send help. 
At Rhythm Detective then replies with a tweet saying, Are you in danger, Destiny? Destiny kept tweeting and is apparently still captive and has a lot of other accounts engaging and inquiring if they are safe. His tweet from July read, I lost count of the days for a while. I don't go to the cafeteria with others. I stay in my room and eat. It's not bad though. They give me what I like. Brownies, I think they're called. I don't always get them though. Sometimes rice. Or soup. I don't like the pills though. Mysterious tweets from this account are still going on, and last tweet at the time was made in the 16th of August, which read, Counting, counting, counting the days, last to first, as I await my name. Mr. Scientist 17 This is a YouTube channel which has the first video in February of 2021, and they have about five videos on their channel, and one is set to premiere in September of 2021. There's quite a bit of decoding that is involved in each of their videos. The first video is titled with a series of zeros and ones, and it shows a black screen with white base 64 text which translates to, the end of the world is near. With an image flashed within which appears to be the picture of the Chernobyl disaster. The video series goes on with a lot of decoding to be done using various number bases to decrypt the messages. At the end of the released videos, the collective idea from the decoded video is that the world would likely end on February 26th, 2023. Tawnia. This YouTube-based ARG features obscure videos with codes included in them, spliced with videos of a guy in an apartment who sounds like he's in pretty bad shape. Its first video was on November 2017 titled, They Tried That, and it had this description. The video series goes on like this with a pattern of disturbing videos with descriptions filled with misspelled words that are to be decoded for understanding. The majority of the interactive elements are the decoding of the messages that are seen in the descriptions and the titles of the videos. And unfortunately, many of the videos have since been made private, making the solving of this ARG difficult, if not impossible.